As you can see from these fishers, fishing has become very efficient from over time and technological advances, but has it become too much? Three reasons, we will have short anonymous nicknames. I'll be dude one. And I'm dude two. What we will be covering in this video are the definition of overfishing, the causes or motives for overfishing, the effects or impacts of overfishing, the history or progression of fishing, the types of fishing, and last but not least, what you can do to help prevent overfishing. What exactly is overfishing? Overfishing, in scientific terms, we see the depleted stock of fish in a body of water by quite literally fishing too much. Often this leads to a depletion of fish, leaving the species of fish not being able to be populated and recovered. This of course happens a lot and is one of the uh, the most dangerous threats to our ocean, while not being as well known as other environmental topics such as pollution. In fact, marine scientists agree that today, the effects of overfishing to the sea might be even greater threat than the effects of pollution. Just look at the increase of fishing over time in this chart. It seems that fishing rates in the last three decades are almost six times higher than in 1950. But before we actually explain the tons of effects that overfishing has on the environment, let's find out what causes it. There are four causes of overfishing, economic needs, subsidies, poor fisheries management, and pirate fishers. Let's start with economic reasons. The first reason on why overfishing happens is because we need fish for the economy, mainly for food, providing us a low calorie energy booster that can provide cardiovascular health, psychological health, prevent insomnia, and so much more. But there are other motives of fishing. For example, fish are fish for medical purposes, oil, fish glue for construction, fish fertilizer, animal feed, and they can be even used for, as a material for electric, electronic parts. Another reason why so many fish are caught is because of the increase in the amount of fishers, technology, and boats. In fact, the number of global fleets, fleets doubled in the last four decades, and the ranks of fishermen have more than tripled. Technology also plays a huge role in overfishing. Using advancements and inventions such as powerful engines, fancier fishing gear, and fish looking devices have all made fishing more easier and efficient than ever before. While this sounds useful, improvements of tech made fishing too efficient. In fact, fishing is so efficient that it actually depletes the stock of fish before you can re even recover and repopulate. This depletion is already huge. The depletion of fish stock made us of all the global fishing efforts have almost quadrupled in the last 40 years. The level of fish that caught has only been doubled. This is a chart that shows the percentage of stocks assessed and you can see that the uh, fisheries, the stocks that have been exported have risen, and the ones have, that have over been over exploited are risen, and also the ones that are not uh, exploited are dropping. So. The fisheries fish, well, it might be pretty obvious. When you have in your possession an efficient, fast, almost automatic technology for fishing, and you're guaranteed a sum of money, it is easy cash for your economical, ecological, cultural, and social benefits. These guaranteed sums of money and benefits given by, uh, to fishers by the government are called subsidies. Subsidies, when our large cause fish to have larger fishing capacity, causing them to fish more, making fish stocks less, su less sustainable, and making fisheries less productive. What does it mean when fisheries are productive? It's not the productive uh, thing. Productive? Productivity is the relationship between the amount of fish produced and the inputs actually used to harvest them. It is another factor in how sustainable a fish is. Fisheries have poor management, productivity is usually bad. Lastly, the last class of overfishing is pirate fishing. Pirate fishing is illegal and unregulated fishing. Pirate fishers can fish as many fish as they want, usually catching endangered, more rare fish as a way to earn their money. Fishing has been around for what seems like forever, and for many purposes too, but mostly for food. Although fishing maybe actually started around 500,000 years ago, it only really quote unquote developed about 40,000 years ago. How do we know this? Well, the skeletal remains of Tian Yuan Man, a 40,000 year old modern human from Eastern Asia, has shown that he regularly consumed freshwater fish. Back then, we didn't really know how they fished, as the tools they made to fish were made up of natural resources, so they naturally disappeared from decomposition. But we do know that spears, the rod, and a net were invented in Egypt around 3500 BC. Romans were consumers and traders of fish. Due to this, they made a wide variety of nets to catch fish. Extra fish were fermented and was made into garum, a delicious condiment. Now, fish has another use. People in the Middle Ages also traded fish. Thus, feudal lords imposed strict rules on who could fish in lakes and rivers. Also, in the mid-1100s, man-made pools were invented and thus people learned how to start fish farming. In the 15th century, the trade of fish expanded a lot. For example, the Dutch stayed at sea for, for several weeks at a time. 
with the invention of herring drifters and boats. Cargo boats were also invented, allowing fishermen to stay at sea instead of food and water. These cargo boats were called vent jaggers, and they also had the task of bringing the catch back to shore. In the 17th century, trawlers were invented and were used for fishing purposes, although they weren't used much until the 19th century after the invention of the steam motor. Steam power was revolutionary. This new fascinating technology was what was needed to construct bigger, better, and more efficient boats. This also allowed fishing in deeper waters. This tech allowed a spike in seafood. In the 18th century, a new type of fishing was created. This was called recreational fishing, or fishing for fun or competition. This is specifically reserved for the wealthy classes. As technology advanced, however, the angling equipment became cheaper, recreational fishing became more and more accessible to the general public. While we were at the topic of history of fishing, let's talk about types of fishing today. Specifically, other types of fishing. This includes cormorant fishing, a type of fishing common in countries such as Japan and China, where trains cormorants, a species of bird, were used to dive into water to catch fish. These birds usually have a wire around their neck to prevent them from eating the fish they capture. Luckily, this type of fishing is more rare today. Flounder trampling. This method is not now used anymore, but people used to go to a small town in Scotland called Palnaki to take part in flounder trampling. People would trap flatfish in the muddy water by standing on them with their feet. Once someone had caught one, they would use a trident-like tool to kill them. Next is Belgi seabed fishing. This method was used by the Belgi people in Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. They would hunt using spear guns and spears. Since they can hold their breath underwater for up to 13 minutes, they don't have to use breathing apparatuses. Another fishing method is spear fishing. This method is one of the older ones dating back to 16,000 years ago. This method included people throwing spears into the water but not diving. Another strange technique of, for fishing is trout tickling. Yes, it sounds weird, but it works. When done correctly, the trout falls into a, a trance-like state and an angler can pick it off the ground. Another way of fishing is otter fishing, where otters catch fish for people. It started around the 6th century and some people in Bangladesh still use it. Angling is the most common form of recreational fishing today, where people use hooks to bait fish, sort of like an ang angler fish, that's the name. First, hooks were made up of bones, horns, shells, and bird beaks. Later, weights were discovered. Furthermore, ice fishing is the practice of fishing over broken ice and using a wooden bait. When fish got close, people used spears to kill them. Uh, lastly but not least, there's netting. Netting is literally just using a net to scoop up fish, and this is not a new method. The effects of overfishing is huge, one of the biggest threats to our marine ecosystem. What are the main obvious effects of overfishing? Well, first of all, overfishing causes uh, fish stocks become depleted. When fish stocks are depleted, oftentimes not enough, not enough adult fish are left to repopulate and recover. This lack of fish often erodes the marine ecosystem. It also causes ecosystems to become unstable with unbalanced amounts of other species that either depend on the fish or are eaten by the fish. But that's just one of the effects that are caused by this huge problem. For example, overfishing causes economic changes as well as environmental. Some industries and businesses are de dependent on fish, so they use the same amount of fish with a constantly decreasing fish stock. And this amount of fish used for economy is huge. In fact, today's worldwide fleet is estimated to be two and a half times because of the capacity needed to catch what we actually need. This amount also causes some species of fish to become endangered or are affected. Another important uh, effect of overfishing is bycatch. What is bycatch? Bycatch is when fishers use large nets to catch, catch fish, but instead catch fish they're not trying to catch. Often this leads to marine organisms like fish, sharks, and dolphins being thrown out. Sometimes it's thrown out wasted fish could be endangered species of fish. This bycatch seems minor, but it's actually a number one killer of these animals worldwide. If the animal does survive after being caught in the gear or net, they, suffer, they often suffer serious life-threatening injuries like oxygen loss and distress while trying to escape. If they do manage to escape though, they typically suffer amputations and other complications that result in death. More than 300,000 whales, dolphins, and porpoises are caught from bycatch every year. This bycatch caused species like caviar, crabs, sharks, bluefin tuna, monkfish, and the like. Atlantic halibut to become endangered or worse. Wow, look at this. As clearly shown, you can see that in the 1950s, before the fishing industries bloomed and technology wasn't as great, we didn't fish as much as today, and we fished near the surface. As technology got better, our boats could catch fish in deeper waters. This pie chart shows multiple threats to the ocean. As you can see, overfishing is one of the largest threats, being a much larger threat than pollution at 4%. Here's another statistic. 80% of the catch is being thrown away as bycatch. This just proves my previous point, how bycatch seems minor, but actually has devastating impacts. 
Now let's talk about the cost of overfishing. First, let's talk money terms. Overfishing has used up to 300,000 jobs and up to $3.2 billion each year. Although it does supply jobs, jobs of fishermen are dwindling due to the decreasing availability of fish stocks. And we just have to mention the labor, gear, and operating supplies to fish. The economic costs even stack up to you. Fish prices are getting higher and higher due to supply and demand, and gas prices are bad. Another way this can also impact you is because overfishing can affect tourism and you. Wanted to go to the attractive swimming with sharks and visit sea life? Well, expect an increased jellyfish population, disrupted swimming, reduced marine species, and decrease in the overall attractiveness of the destination. Now that we have discussed the present cost of overfishing, let's talk about the future, long-term effects, and predictions of overfishing. First, the world is estimated to entirely run out of fish stock by 2048, which is only 26 years away. Long-term effects also include loss of fishermen jobs, reduction in the social, health, and economic well-being, negative impacts on the health of the world's oceans, and multiple levels of marine food webs, changes in species dynamics such as predator-prey relationships, reduction in overall marine biodiversity, ecosystem shifts, resource depletion, reduced biological growth rates, and biomass levels, and an increase to the vulnerability of already stressed ecosystems, especially from invasive marine species that can cause damage. Now, here's what you can do to help. After all, every action matters. First of all, you can choose the right seafood when shopping by choosing fish that are not endangered, as it will lower demand and reduce the number of the endangered fish caught by fishing companies. Next, you can eat small fish instead of big fish. Doing this will prevent the lack of predators of the food chain. These predators are important as they are prey for sharks and other marine predators. Lastly, you can raise awareness, like how I am doing right now, spreading the word through advertisements, newspapers, TV, radio, and other mass media, and give a hand on the overfishing situation. Now, if you're really passionate about this problem, you can join or donate to environmental campaigns. This is what we just discussed in this video. The definition of overfishing, the causes or motives for overfishing, uses of fish, fishing technology, the effects and impacts of overfishing, productivity, fish stock, RFO subsidies, types of fishing, the history or progress progression of fishing, what you can do to help prevent overfishing, statistics, statistics of overfishing, and again, I'm dude one. And I'm dude two. And go make a difference out there.